Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, if you're joining us from the last session, it's good to see you again. If you're new, uh, welcome back, or not welcome back, um, welcome to this new session. Um, I'm excited to answer your questions today about um, my personal favorite outreach program that we offer at the Schmidt Ocean Institute, our Ship to Shore program, which is a virtual field trip program that immerses people in FALCOR 2 and is the best way to directly ask scientists and our crew your questions about their work and life at sea. Thanks so much for that welcome, Hannah. I hope everyone had a chance to watch the video on how to participate in a ship to shore expedition. And I look forward to all of your questions and I hope our participants learn something and get excited to participate in a ship to shore. Before we get started, just a few logistical uh, items to ask questions. Use the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Closed captioning has also been enabled and you can turn that on or off via the icon at the bottom of your screen. And as you heard when you joined, this session is being recorded and will be posted on the SOI website within the next few weeks for you to share with your friends and colleagues or revisit any content that you may have missed. While we give our participants a few minutes to start typing their questions for Hannah, we'll get started with a few that were submitted before the session began. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us. And our first question is, can homeschool students participate in the Ship to Shore experience? Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, homeschool students can participate in a ship to shore experience. That said, um, we cannot uh, facilitate a ship to shore for one student at a time. It's just they take it takes a lot of time and bandwidth for our ship to host these experiences. So I would either recommend um, applying through or signing up for a ship to shore experience through our virtual assembly program. Um, which is uh, something that will be coming in the school year of next year, where we will post virtual assembly opportunities with a given expedition, um, which will be on Zoom uh, in a either webinar or just regular Zoom meeting format. You can register for these virtual assemblies and then hop into a ship to shore and learn through there. Or if you are a part of a homeschool group, so if you have a learning group that you are working with, you can also, um, if you're from the region, uh, you are more than welcome to apply for a small group connection. If you're not from the region um, you can, and your group is large enough, then you can apply for a, a specific virtual assembly to um, for your group. That said, virtual assemblies are generally for groups that are 75 or more students. Thanks, Hannah. And I probably should have started out with this question, but how do we sign up or register to participate in a ship to shore? That should have been my first question. It's a great question. So we are working on building out a web page for our ship to shore program, and that should be coming online in May. And that will have details on virtual assemblies uh, and when they're happening and how to sign up for them. And then also details on how to apply for a small group connection. Great, thank you. So everyone check back for our website or if you're on the email list, I'm sure you'll get a notification in May when you're able to sign up for those ship to shore experiences. And Hannah, we have a question. You mentioned local regions and where Falcor 2 will be operating in. Can the ship to shores be conducted in languages other than English? Yes, definitely. Um, we will always have the priority of having people on board who can conduct ship to shores in the, the local language um, for each given expedition. So for the next couple of years, it will be Spanish. Um, and so, yes, there, yes, 100%. Uh, sometimes we do have scientists on board who speak other languages beyond that region. Um, so if there is someone on board who speaks language, then we can likely host a ship to shore connection in that language. Excellent. And thank you, Lisa, for reminding me. You can also get all of our information on social media. So look for the announcements there as well. And you talked a little bit about this with the homeschool question, but is a ship to shore connection just for a classroom? Who else can participate in these opportunities? 
Yeah, that's a great question. It's not just for classrooms. Uh, we also host um, Ship to Shore connections with nonprofits, community groups, college students. Um, we've hosted Ship to Shore connections with museums, aquariums, after school programs. Uh, for the next expedition, it looks like we'll be doing a Ship to Shore connection with the um, Eco Exploratorio, uh, which is the Natural Science Museum in Puerto Rico. Um, so it's, yes, we, there are so many different types of groups who can apply for these ship to shore connections. It's not just limited to classrooms. Great. It's so great that we can expose the interior of Falkhorn 2 and the science that's taking place to a variety of audiences and people around the world. We have a question about being able to sign up for more than one ship to shore. I don't know if this question means more than one expedition or more than one on the same expedition, but maybe you could address both scenarios. Yeah, that's a great question. I personally would not recommend doing more than one uh, uh, ship to shore for one expedition. Um, it can get a little repetitive. Uh, it's the same ship tour every time. <laughs> Um, uh, but you are welcome to sign up for multiple virtual assemblies. In terms of small group connections, we will likely limit that to one per group, but we can always consider connecting with multiple expeditions with one group um, if we feel like it's a good fit. Uh, and usually that will take um, precedence will be for uh, regional groups based off of where the ship is operating. Great tips, thank you. What kind of technology do you need to have access to to participate in a ship to shore? Yeah, that is another really great question. Um, you need a good internet connection. Um, you need probably a projector and a screen, some speakers and a laptop um, or computer. So if you don't have access to these the, the equipment to be able to facilitate a ship to shore connection with your group, and if you are from the local region where we are operating out of, you, we have a micro grants program where you can apply, um, uh, submit a budget for us to purchase equipment for you to connect to the ship and participate in our ship to shore program. Great. Well, you answered my next question about how to get access to those types of equipment or resources if you don't have them. But could you tell us where we apply to? Is there an email address or an online form where we submit the information that um, SOI would need to be able to fulfill these micro grants. There will be information um, and questions um, in the small group application um, on applying for that micro grants um, program. Great. Just a quick reminder to our participants to use the Q&A box if you have any additional questions for Hannah. Hannah, I've heard of the Back Ashores that um, started last year and are posted on YouTube. Could you explain what the difference is between a Back to Shore and a Ship to Shore? Yeah, that's a great question. So Back Ashore is a program that Allison hosts um, uh, and that I run in the back end. Back Ashore is uh, actually an example of another type of ship to shore that we can conduct, which is just an open uh, audience live event. Um, so the um, Back Ashore sort of was created as we did not have expeditions last year as a way for us to check in with scientists who have been on, uh, who were on Falkor Classic about where their research has gone since their expedition. So usually an expedition is just where the research is getting started. Um, scientists actually don't know that much when after their, their, that first initial expedition, and it takes years from them studying the samples and the data collected on their expedition to start making scientific conclusions. So Back Ashore is a program that, um, or a, an event uh, that we started uh, to check in with our scientists and do live Q&A with them um, on what they've learned about their work since their time with us or what they've weren't learned from their work. Um, that said, uh, that's these are live events that are open to the public that are live streamed on our YouTube channel. And I do anticipate that we will have more of these sort of public live streamed events uh, that are shipped to shores where that will come directly from Falcor 2. Great. They both sound like exciting online events. 
Could you give us maybe some examples of what our audience might experience during a ship to shore? So you mentioned a tour of the vessel, but are there um, other things they might see or specific people on board Falcor 2 that they might interact with? Yeah, that's a great question. So the ship to shore program is pretty customizable and it really depends on what is going on on the ship at any given point in time in terms of what you will experience. So we will have scientists that you will meet with. Um, they're usually selected based off of their availability and their interest in leading a ship to shore. Um, you will likely interact with one of our multimedia technicians, uh, either Sophia or Alex. Um, will always be engaged because they're the ones setting up the technology and running the ship to shore from the ship. Uh, but for, give, for an example, on the last expedition, there was a couple of times we were doing a ship to shore right when they were launching the autonomous underwater vehicles, the AUVs. So we got to watch the launch um, of the AUVs. There's been ship to shores where we're in the middle of a live dive and we can pull in the stuff that the scientists are seeing from the live dive into the ship to shore. Uh, if we have some really awesome mapping data, we'll show that mapping data. We'll walk around, we'll go into the labs, we'll see some samples um, and scientists will just eagerly uh, answer any question that you might have um, about their life at sea. Sounds exciting. I'm ready to join a ship to shore. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really we have a, <laughs> yes, they are. I have seen one before, but you made me excited to, to join another one soon. We have a question about school districts joining. Um, can entire school districts join or do you prefer more small groups like a single classroom? Yeah. Um, so Lar like an entire, I mean, I can imagine it would be hard to coordinate your entire school district for one big live event, but if you're able to do it, you can definitely apply for a virtual assembly. That said, um, virtual assemblies, schools can also apply for like one given grade level at their school. I do, I would say that the Ship to Shore program um, is best for fifth grade and up. Um, uh, younger students, it can be a, a little bit of a challenge with just some of the scientific concepts that we are covering at sea, um, finding a happy medium for them. But I think even then seeing all the cool technology can also be very exciting for kids below the age of 10. Um, but yeah, 10 and up, you can apply for a given grade level. You can apply for your entire school. If you think you can fit every single school in your school district, into one event, that's also possible, but we can also discuss maybe doing just uh, like having more than one if you wanna uh, uh, submit for your entire school district. Sounds good. Is there a happy medium size that you would recommend or kind of an ideal range number for participants? As you mentioned, school districts do get a little bit large and it can be difficult to captivate such a large audience. So is there a sweet spot that you would recommend uh, a group B? Yeah, so because it takes place over Zoom, we can't have more than 500 participants at a time. We do understand though that five, like being one child in a group of 500 is, uh, it's hard to get your question answered. Um, so, I would say for virtual assemblies, uh, like a happy number would be 100 um, to 200. If it's a little more, we can do that too. Um, for small group connections, that would be a group of 20, um, about a group of 20 uh, or less. We tend to not like to schedule connections for groups lower than 15 in size, just because again, these, uh, these ship to shores, they take a lot of bandwidth um, and time uh, to set up and just we want to honor the amount of time um, with uh, in terms of people that we're reaching. Yes, there's a lot going on board the vessel and our technicians and multimedia correspondents, as you mentioned, are taking time out of their busy day. Um, so just to reiterate that, we have someone that says their school district is um, 89 people. And is that OK? It sounds like that would be about right in your sweet spot. But someone just wanted to check. Yes. 
Yeah, that's perfect. 89 people is great. 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 And can museums or other centers um, broadcast that, that have maybe a wider participation network, can they sign up to um, participate in Ship to Shores and maybe broadcast it throughout the museum? Yes, um, definitely. That is 100% a possibility. Um, again, we will likely prioritize museums uh, in air, like that have a reach to the local region where we are operating. But um, if we feel like it's a good fit, we will definitely work with museums to broadcast into their space. Great. And in that situation, do you recommend that the museum or kind of, I guess, in schools to the other side of the participants have sort of a teacher or a moderator or someone that can moderate the interaction with the group and um, through Zoom with the people on board Falcor too? Yeah, I definitely recommend having a moderator in the audience um, to sort of assist the flow of questions. Uh, so the other thing with these programs is sometimes it's to like a really large room um, and people come up and they ask questions to a microphone or to the computer um, if there is no microphone. Other times we send out the link and everybody joins onto one link and there's like 200 people in one Zoom room. So that's where people would be typing the questions. Um, I am always usually on a ship to shore call. There will always usually be a ship, uh, not a ship, a shore based uh, communications person from SOI on a ship to shore call, just because um, sometimes the internet is not always reliable at sea. So in the case that we lose the ship, I will be there to sort of uh, answer any questions while we wait for the ship to rejoin. Awesome. Can you think of any fun questions that you've had kids ask of scientists or technicians, or can you recall like your favorite question that has come up? Oh my goodness, so many. Um, uh, yeah, I think just seeing sort of like, I always, every single time we do a ship to shore call, I'm like worried there will be no questions. And that is never the case. Uh, there are always questions and sometimes it's hard to keep them to stop coming. Like sometimes it can be really hard for us to end a ship to shore call just because there are so many questions. Um, I think uh, my personal favorites ha uh, have usually been when we are connecting with schools who uh, are are close by to where the ship is. So like I, when we were in Australia and we were connecting with schools in Australia, there was more of that like local context and this knowledge of where the ship was. And so just the really thoughtful questions that the students had because they kind of knew their local marine environment was really, really cool to hear. Um, uh, but then also just sort of that, like seeing that amazement where kids and not just kids, like college students and, um, uh, and adults who are connecting with us um, are just so, I think it's, it's such a different world for a lot of people who are not um, familiar with oceanographic science that there's just a lot of amazement and like wanting to learn, like, how do you even like do this work at sea? Um, and so I think just there's such a wide breadth. I also love the questions that challenge us, like think, make us think about like what our impacts are on the marine environment as a ship or um, like about deep sea mining. Like there's, it's, it's really interesting. There's, there's never not a cool question and they're all good. Yeah, I love it. And I can hear your enthusiasm for the kid, the kids enthusiasm coming through when you answer. So that's really cool. We have um, a question about how long the ship to shores typically last. What's the average length of a ship to shore experience? Yeah, so they can be a minimum of 30 minutes, though I would say the sweet spot is 45 minutes to an hour. We always say it's 45 minutes, but it, again, there are so many questions that it's very rare for it not to be a full hour. Awesome. We also have a question from a teacher that wants to know if there is resources or help following up or um, prepping their classroom for joining. So kind of ways to get the kids excited and ready for the ship to shore experience and then afterwards some follow up um, so that they can keep learning and adding to their experience. Yeah, that's a really great question. 
I feel like I've said that's a really great question multiple times now. And that's because I just think all questions are pretty great. Um, uh, so uh, in terms of uh, prepping for the experience, I would say looking at the expedition webpage, each uh, expedition has its own webpage providing information. Um, if you're joining like partway through the cruise and they've been out for a while, we've likely um, produced some videos about the expedition. So watching those videos, even tuning into a live stream is a great way to prepare the students ahead of the expedition um, from, uh, or even reading a few of the blogs if they're out. From there with a follow-up, a really great, like it would be to continue following the expedition um, with your students and seeing sort of uh, where things go after the connection, watching the live streams, if you have the time with your classroom or with your community group um, and reading the blogs. But then there's also this really great resource called the Deep Ocean Education Project that we are a partner of with um, uh, the Ocean Exploration Trust, which operates EV Nautilus and then NOAA Ocean Exploration. And that is a really amazing website that compiles the best of all of our resources um, in terms of our multimedia content, our lesson plans, the blogs that have come out. You can also see where our ships are um, and are like are operating and see our expedition schedules there. So I, say, I would say also just continuing to engage in deep sea learning through the Deep Ocean Education Project is a great way to follow up after. Excellent, Hannah. And I just saw that Lisa put in the chat Falcor 2's expedition schedule for the rest of this year. And so I thought maybe the best way to wrap up would be to reiterate how our participants can apply for a ship to shore experience to participate and virtually visit FALCOR 2 during one of its upcoming expeditions this year. Yeah, so we uh, are building a web page. It will be on online, hopefully in, in May. It will be online in May. Um, uh, and that will have the application and more information um, on how to participate in Ship to Shores. Uh, you, we will announce it through our social media, through our newsletter, um, and we'll also post it on the Deep Ocean Education Project. Great, well, I can't wait to hear about all of the students and museums and schools that connect and get to visit FALCOR 2 virtually. And I'm sure we're all looking forward to their questions. So thank you so much, Hannah, for taking the time to answer our audience questions. And we will be back later today with Leonard, Jodica, and Hannah to keep answering your questions about how to apply for ship time, whether you're a scientist, a technologist, an artist at sea, or looking for a birth of opportunity space um, on FALCOR 2. And then Hannah will also be back talking more about the Ship to Shore program. So check the symposium website if you are interested in joining us for more questions. And with that, Hannah, I'll let you close out our session. Thank you all. Uh, I hope to see you in a ship to shore. Um, and thank you for the amazing questions. I really appreciated them.